It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hi, and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. As you can tell, we're in costume today because this is our Halloween special edition. I'm the angel, your cook, Uncle Roy, and who should be my assistant? But the evil devil herself, Miss Callie Alley's come here. Come over here, Callie. Let everyone see your costume. Come here and look at them and see the little devil. Look at him. No, oh, you got the little devil costume on. <laughs> you got the little ears on, see? Had him up higher, but she keeps knocking him off. Yeah, she's so cute. See, the little devil. The little devil and angel, yeah. So in today's episode, we're gonna make some Halloween treats. And first of all, we're gonna do some real, a really simple one. This is just gonna be a homemade cake out of the mix. And what's gonna make it more fun for Halloween is we're gonna take and bake it in a Pyrex bowl. And when we invert it, we're gonna turn it into a pumpkin. It's gonna be really cute. So for this, it's just your simple basic um, cake mix. And we just put this according to the instructions on your box. Each kind is different for whatever kind of flavor you want to do. This one here is a Pillsbury one. And I like these a little bit better because they're so much moister because they have the oil in it. I found out when I make my cakes, even for competition, if there's oil in it, it's going to make it really, really moist. So what, Callie's? You're a little devil, you're getting in trouble, aren't you? Yeah, you're going to get in trouble today, aren't you? Because you're a little devil. Yeah, you're so cute. You want to take and um, make sure that you just do it on low first just to get it moistened. And then we're going to take and beat it for at least two minutes, two and a half minutes on medium speed. And again, when, before we switch over to the uh, higher speed, we want to make sure that you scrape your bowl to get all those dry ingredients from around the edges so that it's thoroughly mixed. You do this with any of your mixes or any of your cakes or cookie doughs. Because when you mix like up in the mixer like that, the dry ingredients, sometimes you have baking soda, powder, whatever, will get up on the edges. You want to make sure it's all blended well together. Now we'll just do this for on medium speed for about two and a half to three minutes. And then we'll just take and scrape off our beater, of course. Mmm. <laughs> that. What that? Then, now, always make sure to take and grease and flour your pans, too. Same way with this. The glass, make sure it's a glass Pyrex bowl so that it's oven proof. I just spray it. I use a spray flour that works just perfectly. So much easier than having to take and grease it and then flour it. And that was always such a mess to do when I was a kid. <laughs> and then you just pour this straight into the bowl. Can't get any easier than that. And then just tap lightly on the countertop too. That helps to get rid of any air bubbles and it makes it smoother. And now I got a preheated 350 degree oven and we'll bake this for about 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. This timing can be different according to your ovens but just the toothpick test will help you to let you know when it is done. Okay, and this is our cake now that turned out. We just turned it upside down and we got the perfect dome. Now this is going to be our Halloween cake. Now like I said, you can use any cake mix, any flavor you want to, it doesn't matter. But first we're gonna make the frosting and this is one third cup butter, which I already softened up about 30 seconds or so. And to this, we're gonna add four and a half cups of powdered sugar, but we're gonna do two cups of it right now first. We wanna beat this in uh, slowly. Get this a uh, nice consistency. One. And like I said, you can just use the inside of your bag to scrape it off to level off so you got your even amount of sugar. Two, it's gonna be four and a half, so that's two. Let's do the half. And so we need two cups later on. And what we're gonna do is just incorporate this first with the butter 
and so this gets blended in smooth first. And then we're going to be adding a quarter cup of milk and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Now I, if you have the clear vanilla, that's better too for whiter frosting. But we're going to color this, so it doesn't matter if you use a dark vanilla. But I like to be a little bit different and I'm going to put an almond flavoring instead. I just like the flavor of it. It gives it a more, I want to say like a coming out of a bakery type of taste to it rather than just being plain vanilla all the time. And we Scandinavians use almond and just about everything. <laughs> and so then we need a quarter cup of milk. And then we'll turn this up high a little bit. And we're going to finish it off with those uh, was two more cups of, of powdered sugar. Oh, the devil's here. Oh, the devil's here. Oh, samples. Taste the frosting? Yeah. Oh, the devil made me do it. Yeah, I couldn't help it. Oh, no, it's going on. And now, if you need to, sometimes you want a nice, smooth, spreading consistency. So you might have to add just a little bit more milk. Well, I'm not going to quite put that in yet because I'm going to do my coloring. I want to do this orange. So, red and yellow make orange. Yeah, it's more. Whoa! Uh, uh, I got frost in the eye. Frost in the eye, Callie. I can't see. And I'm going to need just a little bit more milk in there. It's a little too thick. Put another teaspoon. There, that's smoother. Mmm. Oh, frosting fell. Frosting fell. Yep, should be there. Pick up the pick up the pieces. Yeah, that's a nice creamy consistency. Just what we're looking for. And now we'll just take and frost the cake with this. Ain't that right, Callie? Mmm, she loves cakeies. Oh, she knows it's cakey because I keep it underneath this cake star. So every time she hears the click of the Tupperware container without the cover, she comes running because she knows there's treats inside. <laughs> Don't you, honey? Yeah. Yeah, you know there's treats up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's look at you. Yeah. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Now we're smoothing this around the dome of the cake. And we want to take and texturize this so that it looks like the veins of a pumpkin. So after you get this totally smooth over, go around the edges. You don't have to get right down to the edge of the plate. I just want to smooth this out all around. Then just take your spatula and go from one end to the other. And go up and down. And this is going to take and give you that ridged look of a pumpkin. See? <laughs> Fault the cake, drop the cake. So that gives us the ridges then to make it look like more of a pumpkin. And then we're going to take and color a little bit of this uh, black because we want to take to make the um, face of the, of the jack-o'-lantern. Okay, then I just took the remaining frosting and I just threw that in a little bowl. Add some black food coloring and just mix it up and then we get our black color. And then I just put this into a little plastic sandwich bag and we're going to take and just clip off the tip. And so now we'll just take, after we clip that off, we can just take and draw in our faces. And you can just be as creative as you want. Doing little triangles for eyes. Little triangle nose. And then you can just make the mouth a big smile with the open wide. 
And then you just take and fill in with your blackened teeth. However many teeth you want and however different sizes, shapes. And then I've got some yellow uh, colored sugar. And I'm gonna sprinkle that right inside the mouth. Inside the nose, inside the eyes. out a little bit better and you can get that in better that shaking just has the tendency to go all over the place because this is going to give you the look like as if the pump the jack-o-lanterns lit up because then you have the yellow glow of the candle inside And this is our finished product of our pumpkin cake. Isn't that cute? Now for the stem, I just happened to have an eggplant laying around in the refrigerator. I just chopped off the stem and stuck that on there. You could take and get some green food coloring or a cookie or something and place up there too. But I thought that would make it look more realistic and a little bit more cuter. And see with the yellow sugar, it makes it more lit up. Isn't that clever? That is so cute. So now, while that's baking, we're going to go on to our second uh, recipe. This is going to be homemade caramel corn. Everybody loves that, and you can serve this anytime. It's great at Christmas time, too. But this is a wonderful recipe I got from uh, neighbors when I was a kid. And this uh, caramel corn won, oh, like five years in a row at the uh, Hennepin County Fair. It's great stuff. So first of all, we're going to have, I got in my kettle, what I like to use is the old um, hot water bath container because you want a big roaster. And I got three quarts of pop popcorn in here. Oh! Oh! She's tired. She loves popcorn. So I got, I got that popped in here. And now for the sauce in here, we're going to be using... Um, I need a heavy duty pot. You don't want one of those flimsy aluminum ones, otherwise it's going to take and uh, burn your syrup very easily. So you want to make sure you always get a heavy duty, whenever making candy, a heavy duty pot, one of those cast iron ones almost. And this calls for two cups of brown sugar. And then we need a cup of butter. Oh, there goes the birdie clock. 12 o'clock, Callie. Birdies. And we just put that butter right into the pot. We're going to turn this on to a medium high. And we want this all to uh, blend and melt together. Whenever you make a caramel sauce, you always want your brown sugar and butter to heat up and blend and melt together at the same time. You don't want to take and microwave the butter first and then add the brown sugar to it. It separates then. You want the two to be heated together, and then that way you get your caramel sauce uh, incorporated. It's fused together then, because they'll be heating up together. So we need a wooden spoon for that, and we'll just let this heat up, and we'll bring this to a boil. 
along with, let's see, I had two cups of brown sugar, a cup of butter, and a half cup of dark carol syrup. If you didn't have the dark and you only had white, that would work too. But it's the dark that's going to make it look more like a crack, like Cracker Jack. So we got that in, and then we also need a teaspoon of salt. Callie, what are you doing looking out the window? You're going to scare everybody away with that devil's costume, you know. You're going to scare the squirrels away. She's out, just staring out the, out the living room window. Just staring away. Must be squirrels out there. So then we mix this up and let this boil for about five minutes or until 305 degrees, the hard crack stage on your candy thermometer. Okay, now we got that all done. We're going to take, now, well, popcorn's in the, in the Dutch oven, in the roaster here. And make sure you spray the roaster first though with your spray so that your popcorn and caramels doesn't stick to it. And now uh, this part you have to do rather quickly because this is going to foam up like the peanut brittle. So you want to make sure you don't have your kids or your dogs on you don't burn anybody. And what this here is, it's going to be a half teaspoon of baking soda because my syrup now is up to temperature. And just sprinkle this in along with one tablespoon of vanilla. Now quickly stir this, so this is going to foam up. And this gets poured over your popcorn. And along with this, we're going to put in one jar of dry roasted peanuts. And you can put in more if you want, or less if you want, depends on your preference. And this, we toss all this together, mix this up. And just be careful when you uh, mix this so you don't break up all the popcorn. Just want to lightly toss this up together, mix it thoroughly. And this now, we're going to put this into the oven at 250 degrees. And then you want to take and time it and stir it every 15 minutes. You want to take and then stir the whole thing again and do that and bake that for one hour. But remember to stir it every 15 minutes and then you'll have our caramel corn will be all done. Okay, now our caramel corn should be all done here. And remember, this was stirred around every 15 minutes on a 250 degree oven. And you just stir it up loosely. You don't want to break, ooh, careful not to break all that popcorn. And now we're going to just take and just lay this out on cookie sheets. See, now this is where I saved the, the bad cookie sheets with all the ridges around them. Instead of throwing them out, they work great for making your candy because they hold things together. Now, this is still quite warm yet, and we just let this cool to room temperature. If you want to, you can stick this out on your porch or outside on the deck or something to cool quicker. And then when it cools down completely, then you can break it apart. And then you want to store it in an airtight container like a tin if you want. Now we'll just let this cool down completely. And then we'll just break it into pieces and it'll fall apart and that's nicely. And this is our homemade caramel corn. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to take and make another um, Halloween special recipe. This is going to be our homemade pumpkin soup. And for this we're going to need our heavy duty stock pot. The uh, cast iron kind of heavy one, thick ones. You don't want those tin ones, they're going to burn. Because it's going to be a creamy soup. And what we're going to need is three tablespoons of butter, which I have inside the pot right now. And we're going to heat this up, let that melt, and to that we're going to be adding one medium diced onion and one medium diced apple. Peel the apple first and decor it, and we'll put those right in with the melted butter. And these we're going to take and saute until they get soft and tender. So I'll take about a three to five minutes or so. And then we'll come back and take a look at those and see how they're doing. 
Okay, now my vegetables are nice and tender and, and apple. You can use any kind of apple you want, tart or sweet. It's all your own personal preference. I like to use the Granny Smith apple. I don't want a really heavy sweet apple into the soup. Those are nice and tender. Now to this, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And we're going to be adding two cups of pumpkin. I went to pick this pumpkin up at the store and it's like at this time of year now because this is like the end of September right now as I'm making this and there's like no pumpkin in the stores anywhere I couldn't find it anywhere I went to Thriftway, I went to Cub I uh, uh, went to Super Value in Crystal here and they I got the last can that was there this was the last can they had on the shelf and they said that by the end of uh, September or so that the season will be ready and they'll have more pumpkin available. I'm like, oh lordy, I got a lot of pumpkin bars to make yet too. In fact, I made the pumpkin bars in my first episode if you didn't catch it. I got the recipe if you want it, just email me at the uh, Northwoods Cooking Show at yahoo.com and I can email you back the recipe, any of the recipes that we have. But I have the recipe in there for the pumpkin bars with the cream cheese frosting. It's fabulous. Okay, so that's two cups of pumpkin, and then we need three cups of chicken broth. Oh, what's that? Spills. I spilled. I spilled. My little devil's helping me here. Yeah. She's finally waking up. Soups, yeah, soups, pumpkin soups, yeah. And then to this, we're going to be needing a teaspoon of ground ginger. Mix this up so we don't burn it. Ooh, that's looking pretty. Excuse me, the devil will Prada. Look at that. It's high fashion model now. Look at that. This way, your majesty. Yeah, devil forced. Come here. Out of the way then. Out of the way, 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 out of the way. So we need a, a teaspoon of ginger. Make me forget what I'm doing here, Cali Alley. And also I'm going to be throwing in a half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. All spices in there too, I believe. And then I need a half teaspoon of salt. Mix this together. And now we're going to turn the heat off. And you can pour this into your food processor if you want to, but make sure you have the hole open on the top of it so that this hot steam can escape, otherwise it'll blow up the pressure inside. But what I use now is my uh, immersion wand. These things are just fabulous. They've got them in all the stores. You can get them anywhere. They're very expensive. Except, I got this one at Cub, and they were like, it was like $15. And that's it. Now to this, we're going to be adding uh, one cup of light cream. And I got one cup measured off in here. I had heavy cream. I didn't have any light cream, so I just kind of thinned it out with a little milk. Or you can use half and half, that's what light cream is. And we'll just mix this together. And that's our pumpkin soup. And this is the pumpkin soup. Mmm, Cali, don't that look good? And you can dollop a little bit of sour cream or yogurt on the side. Or like I did here, I put a little bit of whipping cream. This way it gives you that feeling and taste of a homemade pumpkin pie. Boy, is that ever good, Cali? Mmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed our special Halloween edition. Callie and I really had fun doing this for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Now, Callie, let's go answer our mail and see who uh, wrote us in to this week. Look at that, pre-time. 
treat time. Yeah, she gets a treat when we answer the mail. And look, these are our biscuits that we made last time. Look, uh, shaped like little bats. Oh, it's a cute Halloweeny bats. Woo! Scary, scary. Woo! Oh, the devil is, is risen. Woo! Scary, scary. <laughs> Dear Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, I have recipes that call for buttermilk and I ran out. Is there a good substitute for buttermilk? Sign, Tish of St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, Tish, uh, yeah, there is. Uh, if you run out of buttermilk, I, which I do all the time, so I usually don't have buttermilk on hand unless I know a recipe I'm going to make it for. And you can use what is called sour milk. What you do is you take one cup of regular milk minus one teaspoon of the milk and put in one teaspoon of vinegar. Mix that around and let it sit for about three minutes or so. The chemical reaction is going to coagulate that milk and it gets really thick and it's called sour milk and you can use that for in place of your buttermilk. It works just as good. Not quite the buttermilk flavor to it but it does have a good uh, sour milk to it and it's really uh, a cheaper way of of making your buttermilk quick and easy if you happen to run out. So I hope that answers your question, Tish. And Callie's get on you. We're not done yet. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Come here. Callie, come here. Gotta beg to get her in here. Come here. Treat, 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 treat. We gotta say goodbye. Get over here and say goodbye. Get over here. You're not a devil. Well, yes, you are. She's a devil every day. Come here. Get over here and say goodbye to the viewers. So wave goodbye. So from Callie and I, we like to say happy Halloween, eat healthy, be safe, and spread the sunshine. Bye-bye. Say goodbye, Callies. Quinch, quinch, quinch. <laughs>